Hello everyone, my name is Sherry Roster and I'm the Curator of Education here at the Dakota Prairie Museum in Aberdeen, South Dakota. I'm here with my wonderful and talented assistant Whitney to show you a little bit about how you churn butter. This summer we're having a special program that many area families are taking advantage of and making butter is one of the activities we're going to ask them to do. But a few people have asked us exactly how do you do it? So today uh, we're here to show you three different methods of churning your very own butter at home. Now, there's lots of videos out there on YouTube that will show you how to use a stand mixer and other equipment. I'm gonna focus on these three. Uh, at least one of them should be available for your house. Now, the idea behind making butter is to get heavy cream, and the pioneers would have had that so many years ago, when they were milking their cows, uh, to hold the cream and keep putting it in a special container until they had at least a quart. Then they would take that, put it in a container, and then whip it and turn it uh, using the handle and the cranks like you see over here until you've uh, turned it and whipped it so much the bonds actually break and the solids all form together into the butter and the liquids all form together into the buttermilk. In order to do this, here's what we're using today. And we're gonna show you all three and how long it takes and what it looks like. This first one, since we're a museum, we have lots of these. And this is a true old fashioned daisy one gallon butter churn. Now you may not have one of these at home and we realize it, but because this is glass on the outside and you can do a full quart at a time, you can get a really great idea for what you're looking for along the way, the different stages of making butter. This little piece is called a kilner and they're available now. We have several of these at the museum. They're also available on the internet. Anyway, this comes from England. It's a smaller version, but it works exactly the same way. You can't get much more simple than this. One of the first times I ever made butter, I was given a baby food jar, a glass baby food jar. That'll tell you how long ago it's been. And I could only make just a very small amount. This is nothing more than shaking. So this happens to be a screw-on Ziploc container that's about four quarts. And we're going to be using these three things. We'll do them one at a time. Don't worry, we won't have the video on long enough for all three of these all the time. <laughs> that would be boring. But we'll check in about every five minutes on each so you can see the progress. So you'll know about how long it might take for you at home. One thing you must have is heavy whipping cream. Milk won't work, buttermilk won't work, half and half won't work. You have to have the carton that says heavy whipping cream. There's lots of varieties and brands out there. One thing I've found over the years, and I've been making cream now, or making butter, for about 30 years, is the more basic the cream, the better. They have other brands that have ultra-pasteurized and ultra-homogenized, and that is wonderful for baking, for cooking. If you want your cream to not spoil quite as fast as these would, but if you're doing something really old fashioned like making butter, use the old fashioned uh, type of cream where it is pasteurized, uh, but it's not the ultra. That gives it a different kind of flavor. One other thing, never fill these churns more than half full. 
I found that one out the hard way because as you're turning, especially these two, as you're turning the, the crank, which is turning the paddles down below, it's whipping air into it. And those churns actually, you have to have room for the cream to double because you're whipping that much air into it. So if you feel this all the way to the top, like I did once, and it starts um, expanding, you have stuff leaking out all over the place. So try just one quart at a time, or for these two, just two cups at a time. We're gonna start with our biggest and our oldest. This is a traditional daisy churn. You might have one of these around your home, you never know, especially if you like to collect antiques. If you do, make sure it's washed and dried thoroughly inside and there's no rust or anything like that anywhere. Uh, we're fortunate over the years, so many people have given us these beautiful churns that we can use. And we make a lot of butter every year at the museum between our special uh, school programs and then our history camp programs that uh, we can't have this year. The lid comes off and underneath what you see is a paddle. And as you turn the handle, the paddle goes round and round. Up on top of the machine, this is for later, there's a little place where you can strain the buttermilk from the butter, but that's after we make it. So inside, it's just a big glass square. It's all cleaned and sanitized. We took care of that later. Now to get started with this, we come over and we take our cream and we just pour it in. And you know heavy whipping cream when you see it, it's very, very thick. This cream is also room temperature. We've had this out about 45 minutes. Room temperature cream just churns faster. It won't be out long enough for the cream to go bad. Cream goes over there. Lid goes back on. And you want to be sure to get the lid on straight. And trust me, you'll know if it's not. Now, if I had 18 kids here from history camp or from our regular programs, this would go pretty fast because I tell each one to turn the churn about 30 times. Hold on to the handle and you turn the churn. This is the five minute point and we've stopped. We turn the handle for approximately the same speed. And it's not done by any means. But if you take a look at the level, it's up to here now. When we started and I first poured it in, the level was right about here on the container. So it's gone up about 50%. Now, here we are at 10 minutes. Both of our arms are starting to get a little uh, a bit of a workout. It has come up even more. Now our line is truly about halfway up the gallon container. That's why. Don't fill it too full. The consistency of the cream inside is also starting to get thicker. As I'm turning the churn, it is more like a very thin whipped cream. And you can see where there's a little bit of a gap once you get going from where the cream is and then where the little blades are. We're at about the 12 minute mark right now. And I wanted to show you that this is what happens about halfway. You may think, oh, I've got butter, but you don't. It has turned into extremely stiff whipped cream. And as Whitney was uh, churning it before, it has a lot more resistance than before. I mean, this is really, really stiff. I just wanted to show you this point to say 
You're not there yet, but you're getting really, really close. We are at 15 minutes right now, and we went from the cream being very, very hard and way up here, as soon as you got past that, it started reducing. It collapsed in on itself. And as now you can see, or it's kind of hard to see, but the level's way back down here again. We're so close for this to turn, and it only takes about 10 turns of the handle from when it starts breaking until it'll go into a big clump of butter and then having all the buttermilk around. So bear with us as I turn this. It shouldn't be too much longer. You'll know it when it happens. Because the handle gets really hard to turn, even harder than before. It's starting. I can feel it. It's gonna get harder and harder. Things are breaking. The butter is coming together. The buttermilk is getting very loose. have to be sure you go until you get to this point and now you have besides a mess homemade butter and you have the thick the solid which is the butter and then the liquid which is the buttermilk this churn is nice because it has this pour spout. And in the old days, go well, and today if you'd like, this is how the pioneer women would have separated and kept their buttermilk from the butter. Buttermilk is a great thing, especially for cooking, although my father loved to drink it. And when I first started working here, when he was still alive, he would say, bring the buttermilk home for me. Buttermilk is good for so many things. There's buttermilk donuts, buttermilk pancakes. We make a great buttermilk brownie here as a thank you for the kids. And you get a couple of cups, not quite two cups, of buttermilk out of each time you make your butter. Oh, buttermilk cookies and now we have what's left is the butter you may not have a 120 year old wood butter working spoon around your house but you need to get the butter out of the container and into a bowl we just have a regular glass pyrex bowl the thing that you have to do before you eat this is you have to wash the buttermilk out of the butter. And when the kids are standing around the table as we're doing this at our camps or here at the museum, they look at us like, wash it? If you don't, it kind of gets a, a different taste to it. So I just put the spoon in there and I loosened it. I'm pouring it in. Everything's out of the container. There we go. So now we have a big lump of butter in our bowl and we need to get the buttermilk out of it. I've watched people and they have gone as far as this and then eaten the butter and said, mm, how nice, but it's, it tastes a whole lot better if you do get the buttermilk out of it. Um, it'll certainly last longer. Now, you can use any surface that is um, kind of wide and flat. Spatula would be perfect. It doesn't have to be wood. It could be rubber. But you want to push this down so it's on the bottom of your bowl really well. And then you want to pour out the buttermilk into another bowl. We're just putting it back in the jar. Now, important step, use cold water. 
not warm. And we just had this bottled water in the fridge. You want to put maybe half to three quarters of a cup in there. And there's nothing rocket science-y about this. You just need to move the butter around. I'm taking and bringing it back on itself in the middle and I'm just going around the bowl to do it. Everyone has their own technique. This was the technique that I learned from the lady who taught me. Now, no clear water in here. It is all buttermilk. So I'll pour it out. And we'll do it again. But the butter's already starting to look better. Let's pour that out. Looking a lot more like butter now. Let's do it one more time. Now, this is not salted. And some people at their homes never use salted butter. Some don't use salted butter when it comes to baking. I'm, you can stop now after pouring the rest of the water out or we're gonna put a little bit of salt in it. It doesn't take a lot. I have the container open and there's a fair stream coming out and I'm gonna do it for about five seconds is all. And the kids always look at it and say, that's so much salt. Not when you come back and you work it some more. It's a good firm butter. And now you can take it out and put it in your own dish. Remember this butter like any other natural product. Don't leave it on the counter for too long. Um, but if you do put it in the fridge, take it out because as it gets really cold, it's hard to spread on bread. So it does need to be kind of room temperature. This is just absolutely perfect. Yeah. This is a Kilner, um, smaller churn. They're available today on the internet, also in catalogs. Uh, maybe a little easier for you to have at home, although you can't fit as much cream in here, so that means you can't get as much butter out of it. So this, unlike the other, is not wood. This is metal, which means you can put this in the dishwasher. Although it's just as easy to uh, wash it by hand. We're not going to fill it all the way, remember. We're only going to go up about half. This lid fits in, but it does not screw down. I found this out the hard way. So it lifts straight up. So as you are working this, keep that in mind. Hold on to the handle and turn down. And you're doing the exact same process. It's just a smaller base. Five minutes has gone by with our little Kilmer churn. And like the other, it has raised up in volume, but it's still very loose, as you can see. We were hoping that maybe, since it was a smaller space, it'd be done in five minutes, but it's not. So we'll sign off and we will come back at 10 and see what it's like. We're now at the 10 minute with the Kilner and it's come up a bit, but it's still quite loose. Uh, when we were using the regular churn at 10 minutes, it had started to get just a little bit thicker. But we're gonna keep going for another five minutes and see what the consistency is then. We're now at 15 minutes and this wasn't uh, responding at all like the other churn. So we poured some of the cream out. We poured about this much out of a glass. And we'll go another five minutes to 20 minutes and then we'll let you know. 
We are now at about 17 minutes. It's just getting ready to turn. And we noticed a huge pickup of movement as soon as we took that extra cream out. So more than likely what we did at the first was we overfilled it. That being said, then you put in maybe a cup to a cup and a quarter of cream at the beginning. It's not bad, but you're gonna have to go a long ways to get any kind of substantial butter. So we think it's about ready to go. So we're going to be focusing in on this and it should be breaking just like the other one where it'll clump into a ball of butter and then the rest will be the buttermilk. Keep watching now. Can you see how it's breaking? Mm -hmm. We got a big ball of butter and then we've got the buttermilk. Now that's two times that you can see what it looks like on the outside, see, you've got the big ball of, well, it's actually a small ball of butter compared to the other, but a ball of butter here, and then the liquid is very, very loose running around it. All right, we're ready to wash the butter. It took a little over 17 minutes. And again, I think the issue for it taking so long was we overfilled it. So as we take the lid off, this has butter, it's going to take a knife, um, <laughs> throughout the little um, paddles. So that's interesting. I'll put that in there. Oop, can't do that yet. Uh, we need to get the buttermilk off. There should be some buttermilk on here. While it doesn't have the same strainer that it did before, we were hoping that this would work. So not nearly the butter as before. Well, as you can tell, there's quite a bit of a difference in the amount of butter on this. Just enough for the bottom. But if you're doing a small party, the consistency is still the same. Once you press it down, still good. Let's pour the extra in here. Again, wash with cold water and we'll take nearly as much. Take your spoon or your uh, spatula. spatula. Thank you. Thank you, Whitney. <laughs> and just continue to move it around. In fact, next time I'll use a spatula to show you the difference. Again, don't skip this step. Most people have some kind of a bowl. It doesn't have to be glass. It doesn't have to be this big. But don't skip the step, whatever you do. And also, don't use the buttermilk once you've poured the water, the wash water into it. We saved the other for some buttermilk brownies. But here's what you can do with a spatula. And it's kind of sort of the same. It'll stick just a little bit more but you're just interested in getting the butter moved around so you can get that buttermilk washed off. A little bit of salt, move it around again. And I say we have about a quarter of the amount of butter that we had with our first. But the consistency is good, nice and smooth. Put that on a cracker or melt that on popcorn or put it on a piece of bread. It's gonna taste really well. We'll clean up and we'll come back and we'll do the really old fashioned, put it in a container and shake it. <laughs> there, now we are set to go for our very last uh, demonstration. This is probably the simplest of all, and it is a plastic container with a lid that turns, because you're gonna be shaking this a lot. Um, in the past, people have used something as small as a baby food jar with 
the lids on. Or if you have canning jars, glass canning jars, you could use a minimum of a pint and probably as big as a quart. We have our remaining cream, our last maybe two cups. Fills it about half. And this, we have no idea how long it's gonna take. Uh, first was about 15 minutes with our main churn. The second was about 17, although not quite halfway through, we poured out about half of our cream in the smaller churn. This will start shaking and it's this. So we'll keep working on this and we'll come back in five minutes and see what it's like inside. So it's only been five minutes. We poured the cream up to about this point. And when we opened it just before we started recording, we were so shocked. Look at how thick it is. This already has the consistency of marshmallow cream. Um, it's a little tough to shake right now. It doesn't feel like it's shaking all that much, but we're going to go another five minutes and see where we're at and hopefully it will, hopefully it will be done. 10 minutes. It was very difficult to shake for a little bit, but we persevered and we have completed butter. This is definitely the easiest way to go and something that you should have in your home, any kind of container. So we've got the butter milk and the butter. The butter isn't maybe quite as solidly packed together because it doesn't have the paddles that have pushed it. We've just shaken it. So we're going to pour the butter milk out kind of like we did with the others. And look at that. That is the coolest thing I tell you. Why, thank you, Whitney. She's multitasking. So a lot more butter this way. You could set up a couple of these or maybe even go smaller, have four of them going. The consistency of the butter on this one is just a little bit softer, but I think with some time and using your spoon or whatever uh, you'll be using to uh, wash the butter with, you should be able to fix it to the bottom of the bowl, pour off the buttermilk and then start washing it like we've done the last few times with a little bit of salt again. We'll mix it back around. We'll get the water out. Pour the rest of the buttermilk off. And we have finished our demonstration. We had our first big butter churn. Salt and butter tastes so good. Our first churn is our, our main older churn. You can pour a whole quart of cream in it. It took a little over 15 minutes to do with the cream at room temperature. Our second smaller churn, we discovered we overfilled. I think that would probably take about eight minutes, but you're gonna get a very small portion of butter. Put about one cup of cream in. And this, probably the easiest for any of you to do. If you got any kind of container with a tight lid, this is plastic, you could use a glass jar. This was under 10 minutes. It was amazing. Butter was a little softer, but I think you can still wash it, especially with really cold water. So we hope this helped. Uh, and for the people using our history packets, we hope this will inspire you to learn a little more about history. Again, my name is Sherry Rostern. I'm the Curator of Education here at the Dakota Prairie Museum in Aberdeen, South Dakota with my wonderful assistant, Whitney, and we say goodbye.